In this video, we're going to be taking a look at writing x86 programs using NASM. Now, NASM is a type of x86 syntax that is designed based off of the Intel syntax for x86. What it does is it creates more of a simplified approach to the syntax in a way that it's more approachable to the general user. The x86 that you might usually see on Linux systems uses a mix of different syntax, typically more based on the AT&T version of the x86 syntax. This syntax tends to be a little bit more complex and a little bit harder to learn, which is why we tend to gravitate towards NASM for first learning x86 programming. In addition to this, NASM is quite popular and fairly frequently used, so you will see it in a lot of different jobs and used in the industry as well, so it's a very valuable way to learn x86 programming. In learning x86 programming this way, you will still obtain all of the skills and understandings required to do the AT&T version of it, or really any version of the syntax. Basically, all that's going to happen is some of the operations are going to change names, some of the ways that you declare things are going to change slightly. It's not going to be a big deal. You're going to understand all the fundamentals regardless. Um, with NASM, you could typically work on a Linux machine. I believe that there's also versions for Windows as well, but I typically tend to stick to Linux just because it's the, the easiest to work with for assembly programming and low-level programming overall. So with that understood, let's take a look at how we can create a simple program in x86. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a file in a text editor. Um, it doesn't matter what the name of the file is or um, what text editor you use. You can feel free to use whatever you're comfortable with. I'm going to call my file first.s. Um, .s or .as or .asm are typical file formats that are used for assembly. I usually stick with .s. So what we're going to do is we're going to declare a few different sections in our code. Basically, assembly gets broken down into different sections. There's going to be a section called data. And then there's going to be a section called text. And there are other possible sections, but these are the, the two that we're going to declare to start off here. The data section stores variables. So it's things that we want to store in memory when our program runs. That's the idea of the data section. The text section is the actual code of our program. So it's the actual text that is being run. Then what we need to do is we need to tell the program where it's supposed to start. The way that we do this is by using the following. So we would say global underscore start, and then I would put underscore start colon. What this is doing is it's declaring something known as a label. This underscore start is called a label. It is basically um, a segment of the code. So it's saying this is a section of code and everything that is below start is going to execute when we run the start label. That's the idea of it is that everything runs underneath of start when start is called. Now, the reason why we put in this global underscore start is because we need something external to this program to know where start is. What we're doing is we're exporting start. So we're saying, hey, we have this label. It's called underscore start. If you want to run our program, you just need to say, okay, run underscore start. So that tells the, the actual computer where to start executing. So it tells it to start executing at this start label. From here, we actually start writing all of the code for our program. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to move some data around in our registers. So we're just going to learn how to move data in registers. So the way that this is done is using an instruction known as move, M-O-V, like this. So M-O-V, or move, is an instruction that will move data from one location into another. And there's a lot of different ways that we can work with the move instruction. The way that I'm going to demonstrate you to, to you today is to move a static value, so like an integer value, into a register. So I want to move into the register EAX, the value one. Remember, EAX is just one of the registers that exists on our system. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another move. I'm going to say, okay, move into EBX, the value one. So this is just moving different values into different registers. I move one into EAX and then one into EBX. Now, what I want to do now is I want to end my program. To end the program, what we need to do is we need to do something known as an interrupt. So the way that we do that is we say INT, and then I'm going to type in ADH. Okay, so H stands for hex, so we're saying 80 in hexadecimal. What I'm doing here is when I run an interrupt, what I do is I go to the system and I say, hey, our program needs the operating system to do something. And then the operating system is going to do an action based on the value that I put in register EAX. So EAX is being used in a special way in this program. 
What EAX does is it tells the operating system what we want to do when the interrupt 80 is called. In this case, what one indicates is it indicates that we want to run the exit system call. What the exit system call will do is it will end the program and it will set an exit status code. And the status code just indicates that the program ran successfully or not. The status code is going to be whatever we put into EBX. So in this case, the status code would be equal to one. So to review this, EAX is telling us what system call we want to do. In this case, it's set to one, and one would mean that we exit the program. EBX tells us what we want to output as our status code. In this case, we're outputting the status code as one. And then INT is a system interrupt. It calls to the operating system and says, I need you to do something. And ADH allows us to be able to tell it to exit the program using EAX set to one. So EAX set to one will basically look up at a table and it will look up, okay, one means exit, and then it will exit our program for us. So let me show you that that actually does work. Uh, the way that we actually compile our program is using two instructions. I'm gonna say nasm hyphen F elf hyphen O first dot O first dot S. So the file format is elf, the output file is first dot O, the input file is first dot S. So this will actually compile it into an object file. And then what we do is we load it. We do a load hyphen M elf underscore I 386 uh, hyphen O first and then first dot O. So let me explain this to you. So the reason why I'm doing elf I386 is because I'm compiling this specifically in x86 um, in 32 bit, right? So because I'm on a 64 bit computer, I actually need to specify that I'm targeting 32 bit instructions. So this is important to put in if you're running on a 64 bit machine. Even if you're on a 32 bit machine, it's always good to specify specifically that you're going for Intel 386 because that will allow us to um, be targeting a consistent assembly language. The output is the name of the file. So in this case, I'm naming it first. This creates an executable named first. And then first.o is the input. So that's the object file that gets inputted in. And when we do this, we now have um, the .o file, which was the object file, the .s is the source code, and then first is the executable. We can run this by doing dot slash first. To see the um, exit code that was set on Linux, you could just say echo dollar sign question mark. And you can see I could get an output of one. That's because in EBX, we set that value to one, right? Now there are a few different ways that I could prove to you that this is actually working. I could try changing EBX in my source code um, and I could show you that it changes every single time. But something that's actually easier to see is if we just debug the program. So I could say GDB first. And then what we could do is we can do a few different things here. So um, basics of working with GDB, which is our debugger. Um, if you say layout ASM, what that will do is it will put you in the assembly mode. So it will show all of the information related to the assembly program. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a breakpoint in at underscore start. So I'm telling the uh, debugger that I want it to stop right when it hits that start label. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in run. And what you'll see is that it stops right at that start label, right? So it, it stopped right now and now we can continue executing sort of step by step seeing what happens each time. So, what we could do is we could say step i, so that's an incremental step. It will step one instruction forward. And you could see what that did, what I'm claiming that that did is that it moved one into EAX, which you could see here in this instruction. The way that I could prove that is I could say, okay, info registers EAX. And as you can see, it shows me that EAX has a value of one. So you can see that it actually translates to tell me, okay, yep, EAX does actually have a value of one. Now, let me show you, okay, so info registers EBX. EBX currently has a value of zero. Let's step I, that steps through the next instruction. Now it should have a value of one, which it does. So you can see that that actually does happen, right? So you can see that this actually is modifying each of those registers as I am claiming is the case. So this gives you a general idea of how to run a very simple program and how to actually debug it in GDB. And we're gonna be continuing to use these instructions, continuing to use GDB, so don't worry, we'll keep revisiting this idea as we continue forward, so you'll become a pro with this in no time. The main things that I want you to take away at this point is what the move instruction does, which is it moves something into a register, or just moves between a source and a destination, essentially, right? So when you take a look at like those instructions, 
let's just uh, pull those up here quickly. It moves from a source, which is this right-hand value, into a destination, which is this left-hand value. So that's something to keep in mind with this move instruction. And then I just want you to understand the general structure of this program, you know, that we have our start label, that we um, export using global, that we have this interrupt that runs, and that EAX and EBX are used in the interrupt in order to, you know, exit the program. So those are the general things that you want to have a good handle on right now. So thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at actually declaring variables and sort of continuing to build up our knowledge piece by piece and better understanding how we can build x86 programs. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.